Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino, inviting you to another episode concerning the Nouveau Vintage Computer Pocket 386, a modern-made machine with 8 megabytes of RAM, an AMD 386 Intel 8386 compatible processor, a 2 gigabyte compact flash card, en lieu of a hard disk, Coming pre-installed with Windows 3.114 Workgroup, so Windows 95, and so on and so forth, having the qualities of letting the heart jump in joy that yearns for the end of the 80s and beginning of the 90s. So here you're seeing its beautiful matte VGA screen, and we shall now see it boot into DOS in order to demonstrate how you can put Linux on that machine. And in particular, how you can have your cake and eat it. For the Linux that I am going to be showing you, it's called Basic Linux, and it can be operated from a file inside the DOS environment. In other words, you are starting a program, then Linux takes over, and you do not need to reinstall anything, you just keeping your DOS in parallel and you be just happy. So we need to go to the direction to the directory baslin. That's that's hard coded. It needs to be baslin. I will increase a little bit the screen for you to see better what is happening over here. All right. So we're going to baslin. And here I have put a couple of files whose source and nature I shall explain in a moment. <sighs> I'm not in Linux yet, right? And in particular, here you see the main components of basic Linux. Boot bat is the thing you issue and then load Linux essentially is lo loading the kernel and FSIMG is the file system of some 20 megabyte. So, that then looks like this. It is actually quite snappy. Its distribution contains an optional swap file, but I definitely did use it. I, um, you just unpack it in the baslin directory, it then takes care of it by itself. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing how Linux is taking over from DOS and yeah, getting ready to serve us its environment. Yeah, and that's the greeting screen. And pressing enter does indeed activate the console. It is a very simplified system. It does not permit for any luxuries like login and whatnot. However, it still serves nicely enough as a sort of technology demonstrator for Linux. If I now say ls, you see here the directory structure. Particularly interesting is the DOS directory, for that is upstairs, in other words, the surrounding DOS system. And if I say DF, I am seeing here data on the usage of the file system, including for the Linux file, which is like having nearly five megabytes used and about 15 megabytes free. And I'm seeing upstairs the DOS system. The possibility to actually access DOS is nice because basic Linux is of course rather restricted. <laughs> yeah, okay, this was unexpected, yes. It's a rather restricted environment. It lacks a lot of things you might wish to have, but it has one positive property. Apart from allowing you to install a couple of its own packages, it also allows you to install packages of Slackware 4. I love Slackware. When you're dealing with early Linux, you're nearly guaranteed to bump into it. And in fact, it is very user-friendly considering the times we are right now observing, which is, well, for basic Linux, actually not even that far away. I believe the last release was in 2007, but really it is modeling a sort of end of the 90s system. Now, looking in into the DOS directory, 
<laughs> you were having data working on the Linux gosh. Uh, we are seeing that, you know, here is Windows 3.11, Windows. We're seeing the common directory structure we would sort of expect of the C drive, which means we can actually go to the bus lean directory from where our adventure really started. And here I have put in a directory called pack a couple of packages so that we may together explore how package installation works. Okay, and here are, yeah, I put four categories, add-ons of basic Linux, kernel modules, should I ever need them, Slackware 4 packages and contributed packages to, Slack, to Slackware 4. Let's go to the add-ons. These are the native packages delivered together with basic Linux 4, if you, um, yeah, basic Linux 3, if you get them from the website, from the add-on section. And you see, not too much really, but there are a couple of nice things. The issue I'm having here is don't really go for X11. Like it will run, but it does not run very quickly. I have been trying to run exactly basic Linux many years ago on my 486DX with 75 megahertz. And I tell you, it was creeping slow. I am just going to add midnight commander, which is with PKG mc.tgz and now it is unpacking the midnight command uh, the midnight command line file manager into its dos image and if i say now mc hey, yeah whatever something doesn't work but <laughs> we still get a decent view of MC. Very nice, let's get out of it. Okay, what else might we wish from here? Yeah, BASIC is a rather nice BASIC interpreter, but I have really one in the DOS environment. I don't really need an additional one considering how little space I have. Really, I think that the only contributed message uh, thing, therefore, is maybe MC. I could also go for SC, which is the spreadsheet, but I can't remember ever having used a spreadsheet in command line Linux. So <laughs> that's lovely, but likely pointless. Extra are some other packages for specifically basic Linux, where links to these are provided in the basic Linux website, but there isn't really, yeah, nothing here that I would be very much into. There is TCL, TK, Micro, Telnet, and so on and so forth. It's nice to have them, but I don't need to install them right away, right? Okay, then let's go for the Slack for PK, like Slackware for packages. As there is the one thing I really want to have, namely the Lisp system. I pre-downloaded here a lot of packages, which I might find interesting from the Slackware 4 website. And installation here works just the same as before. I pick what I want. For instance, I want BC, the binary calculator. I don't have it presently. And I say again, P kgbc.tgz. It's nice to have a calculator. I might also consider getting some sort of more proper editor, given that I think here is just some sort of fake VI, but I could go for Elvis, for instance, or something like that. An interesting thing you're seeing here is the egcs.tgz. That's pronounced eggs. And that was a fork of GCC at the time. So there is both eggs and GCC. They were quite at war for a time until in fact, EGCS was adopted as the future basis of GCC. So when you're looking at really old distributions, 
go rather for EGCS rather than GCC. What I want is GCL though. So PKG GCL dot TGZ. Very nice. I expect GNU common lisp to be quite a piggy size wise. It is a descendant of famous Kyoto common lisp and actually a very competent system. But yeah, it's not small. Let's try it out. GCL. Yeah, there we are. Three, three. Can I go up at all? No, I cannot. Not yet. All right, then control D to get out of here. And I'll just get maybe Elvis, I believe. So PKG Elvis, I could have full blown Vim but I have my suspicions about the disk space remaining. Ah, I cannot say PKG Elvis, I must say Elvis.TJZ. So that was the mistake I just made. Great. Does that work now? Yes, it does. So they were having a pretty traditional VI clone. And then if I try GCL here, ah, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> if I go upstairs and go to my S counter directory. This is contributed software to Slackware. That's outside Slackware's normal package tree. So be sure to find that. I will give you the address because there are some interesting things in there, in particular regarding window managers and so on and so forth. We, however, are particularly interested in the library read line because I believe that that will give me command line history for GCL. I shall try. Let's see. But that's why I collected it. Read Lee tilde 1.tgz. And there we get libreadline getting installed. If I now say GCL, and say 3.3. Three. No, I still cannot. Okay, it doesn't make use of it. <laughs> doesn't matter. It was nice to have anyway. And now I have thereby also installed a couple of packages that I feel comfortable with. What is also noteworthy is you have multiple virtual consoles. So if you want to change, you actually can by pressing here, Control Alt, and then F something, okay? F2 gives us a new console, F1 returns us. And you just need to press enter to activate that console. And then you can work in multiple things in parallel and simply switch consoles in order to multitask if you wanted to. So I could have here the midnight commander running over here and I could be having GCL running over there and so on and so forth, right? How much space did my adventure take? You see quite something. I have but about 10 megabytes, actually less, nine megabytes something open for further adventures. So one needs to be careful what one installs, but other than that, that is working. So that was nice, right? The Pocket 386 can run Linux. And the question is, which Linux and from where? <laughs> so as I said, the thing is called basic Linux. This is what its web page is looking like. I have actually prepared here a document with the addresses for you. 
hopefully this is readable. So on this first side, you will find the central page for basic Linux. This is the main address of basic Linux add-ons. This is a description of Slackware's packages. Here you find Slackware's actual packages, but packaged by floppy. And in order to not have to click your way through and just have to guess what's what, this is why packages text tells you the description of what is here. And the contributed Slackware software, you're finding here on Slack, mirrors.slackware.com in the contrib direction, directory. Now as to how things look like physically. So here you see that on the main basic Linux site, let's have you like that, right? You're having two versions which you can pick. The one is the DOS version, which I just demonstrated to you. And the other is the floppy version where two floppies could be used together with a, a RAM disk. But, <laughs> You know, we don't have 12 megabytes of RAM, nor do we have a floppy drive. So this is really the better variant. And it really is nice because it preserves your Windows 95 or Windows 3.11 setup. And, you know, if you download this, which I shall just do now again, because it's easier to reach that way and open the archive, then we see inside exactly what I told you. The file system is the main component of this archive and the rest of the stuff including the Linux kernel under that image, which is necessary to run that operating system from inside MS-DOS. And if you are looking for add-ons, then down here, add-ons for BL3 really give you the programs I showed you before. So that is this, which I had already put on my DOS disk to have it more easily reachable. Right. And yeah, that's what Slackware looks like. So here you're having the main Slackware thing and there are a lot of Slackware floppies here. And <laughs> you know, you might for instance, find interesting stuff in AP1 where you're having like editors like Joe and Jed and so on and so forth. And it's BC, which we installed it also has a version of Midnight Commander, but that does not immediately work on basic Linux and you need some GPM library or something for that. So better just take the native one for basic Linux. And there you're having the description, for instance, here I was just Googling exactly this GPM, what it is, where it can be found and so on and so forth. So. That's really it, ladies and gentlemen. If you wish to use Linux on your Pocket 386, that is perhaps one of the simplest geeky endeavors you can enter into. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope to greet you here soon again for further adventures. If not subscribers yet, please consider joining this friendly community. Until we meet again, I wish you a wonderful time. See you hopefully soon. Thank you for watching and from me, goodbye.